Hey, what is going on guys? It is Vexian with DG and today I'm going to be going over the operator that you should be playing. So let's get right into it. Hey, what is going on guys? It is Vexian with DG here today and today I'm going to be going over one of the most underrated defenders in the game and an operator that you should absolutely be playing right this second. So let's get into it. Now, starting off, DJ's trying to hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If you sub, I'll love you, and you'll let me out of the basement. If you don't, I'm stuck in the basement at least until March, so, you know, help a brother out, you know what I'm saying? And on top of that, let's get into the question of the day. What is your favorite defender in the comments below? Mine is personally Vigil, but a close second is the operator we're going to be talking about today, and that is Capkin. Capkin is an incredibly underrated operator that you should be playing. I'm going to be going over some reasons as why you're going to be playing him and why you need to be playing him and what he offers to your team in any composition. So, starting off, let's go break down Capkin and his abilities and his kit. So, starting off, we've got Capkin. He originally was a 3-armor 1-speed, but that was changed uh, quite a long time ago now. So, he's a 2-2, two -two and he's an incredibly easy operator to play and understand and learn. So, let's go check out his loadout. His loadout is the... NX-19 VSN. This is actually a pretty underrated gun. It has 34 damage, 750 fire rate, 50 mobility, and 30 capacity. Now, what this gun doesn't really display here is that this gun's recoil pattern is incredibly minimal, so it's able to be just held down. Uh, other guns in the game you know, have a higher recoil and are a bit harder to control. This gun is very, very user-friendly in terms of the fact that it has low recoil, but it does also have low damage and fire rate, so there is that. However, I think the low recoil is, is actually fine, and I think it makes up for it having low damage and fire rate, because you can just pre-fire it for a long time, uh, and just be completely fine, and not have to worry about recoil at all. Next up, he has the Sausage. Um, this this is, I mean, it's, it's just the Sausage, you know? Uh, it's a shotgun, it's pretty good, it's a semi-automatic gun, uh, it's mag-fed, so reloading it is a breeze, super easy, and it's actually one of the better shotguns in the game, uh, very good for soft destruction, it is similar to Ella's FO12, but not as good, but still not terrible, I wouldn't bring this unless you need to. Um, I would just honestly stick with the, uh, the Vision, the VSN. I think the VSN is, is just fine, but if you want to meme, run it. His secondary, he has the PMM, which is one of the highest damage secondaries in the game, clocking it at 61 damage. Uh, unfortunately, though, it does only have 8 capacity and 45 mobility, so you're going to be moving a little bit slower with it, which is kind of strange. And... Not that, that many bullets. Not not very many bullets. It's still pretty good. It hits like a truck, and it's a good secondary if you're going to hit your shots. He also has the GSH-18. This gun has a lot more capacity, but it's trading off a lot of damage. This gun is essentially a pea shooter uh, in terms of secondary pistols, but it does make up in, uh, with ammo, which is really good, considering that the PMM runs out of ammo quite quickly. This gun has a lot of it, and you'll be chilling. You'll have double amount in the mag. You're good. This is going to be a good gun to have. And if you can't hit your shots... Is what it is. Then moving on to his gadgets. So Capkin is quite unique, as I believe he's one of the only defenders in the game to both have an impact and a C4. And I want to see him keep this, considering that this is just this is a very interesting combination. So this also plays into how you play Capkin. Now you can play Capkin both as an anchor and as a roamer. He's really versatile. Uh, he's more of a flex pick, if you will, uh, in a similar category to Mozzie, where you can roam and anchor with him if need be. And that's because of his kit. And primarily his secondaries. So if you're going to be anchoring with Capkin, run the C4. Uh, I have C4 in this account. On other accounts, I have Impact. This is probably one of the only operators where I consistently change my gadget. Or my secondary gadget, if you will. And uh, yeah, this is just a good pick. Uh, if you're playing anchor, run the C4. If you're going to be roaming, run the Impacts. And I'll be showing some gameplay of both here in a little bit. And talking about the last thing in his loadout, it is going to be the entry denial device. This is going to be kind of a booby trap that you set on a door. Uh, it does 40 damage to all operators except shield operators. Those take mitigated damage because they have shields and they have resistance to explosives, which this is. He has, gets five of these. He can place this at three varying heights on a doorway, top, middle, and at the floor level. I will show this more in, de in depth when we get into the specific game. So, starting off with one of the... Oh, boy. So starting off with one of the two ways you can play Capcom, I'll be showing how to play Capcom more as an anchor rather than a roamer, even though I personally play him as a roamer. For this, we're going to be demonstrating this on Downstairs Oregon. Now, you know, it's Oregon. It's kind of what it is. And the first thing we're going to start doing is we're going to Capcom off doors. Now, one thing you want to do as Capcom, a little trick, is variate the height of your Capcoms. Capcoms can be placed up high, down low, and on the floor. 
So you don't want to vary the heights of these. I would usually kind of just throw them random, uh, however you see fit. And as an anchor capkin, what you're going to be doing is you're going to be doing doors that are into the site. Anything that allows access to the site that is close to the site, uh, you're going to be trying to put your capkin traps there. This is going to increase damage when people are executing, which means it's going to be very easy for someone like Smoke to get some kills with Smoke canisters or uh, any character that is area denial, whether it be a Goyo, Maestro, something like that. These are going to be aiding those characters in them getting kills and plant denial, as well as going to be easier to take gunfights. Capkin traps do 40 damage to any operator besides shields. That's one good thing to know. Just kind of vary the height. I also vary what side of the door they are on, right? So also putting them on certain sides of the door matter. So if obviously if I'm pushing pillar, I'm nine times out of ten, I'm gonna be aiming at pillar, at the double down down there, or occasionally here. So if I'm aiming here, right? Usually, usually when I'm swinging this door, you're gonna be you're gonna be aiming right, and then like that. So putting a captain trap here, people are gonna see this if they're swinging the door like this. They're just gonna see it. But if you put it down here, they're less likely to see it because they're aiming head level. It's out of their field of view when they're aimed in. So just tricks like that are going to help you play Captain a lot more. I just finished setting up here. And also, another thing you might want to avoid. So I've put three Captains on three doors in a row. So one there, one there, one there. Now, I probably wouldn't put a Captain on this door, even though it's right next to the site. I would maybe spread my Captains out as there are more doors, right? So if we go all the way over here into Freezer. And then even more so upstairs to Freezer Stairs. Put a captain trap here because people do push down freezer stairs. It's one of those things. And like that, so now I have one on the top of that staircase there. Instead of putting one on the top of this staircase here, I would probably put one all the way down here. And this is because if there was one on the other top of the staircase, they might think there's going to be one there. And there's not one there, they might not think there's one here. That's just kind of how that goes. So that's how I would play a an anchor captain, right? That's just one of the, some of the tricks I would do. And, you know, this is just an example of putting them all here. But if I put one, you know here and here maybe i should put one on this double door or rotate them around it all depends and you can pick up your capkins later in the round you don't have to do them right off the bat you don't have to be like oh they're set there you can pick them up and rotate so say you get a call early in the, in the round that you're droning heavy freezer looks like it's gonna be a freezer push you can then rotate say this one right here in electrical all the way to that freezer door and just play reactively off that so that's how i would play an anchor capkin roll now moving on to a roaming Capkin roll. So this is how I personally play Capkin. For this site, we were going to be doing a meeting hall kitchen site. I'd prefer to show you guys on downstairs again, but this will work. So for this, instead of putting Capkin traps on, on entries to the site, you're going to be doing that as well if you want. However, we are going to be putting them aiding in our roam. So if we're going to be roaming upstairs, some people for this specific site would take upstairs, but we're going to be doing it over here in tower. So people are usually going to take tower control and try to take kitchen. It's just easier to do it that way. Trying to demonstrate that. Bomb so, we're going to be doing that. Now, first thing is first, people are going to be trying to take this part of the map. So, we're going to set up for this part of the map. Maybe put something here on this window or on this door. More likely this door because it's, it's just safer to go through this door than it is through the window. You don't have to worry about the vault animation. People are probably going to be clearing out you know, showers. So, we're going to be setting up to be a roaming oriented capkin. And then probably putting one on this door. Also, for this specific capkin, Loadout, we are going to be running the impact nades. This allows us to run a little bit more freely. Set up rotations like this one here. So in this case, I can now play in here. I can now play aggro in here in this hallway. Say if I wanted to play here, I'm going to put one more here as well. And then probably one more on, on white window or even better yet, server door. Because another, people th another, pe another thing people do on this specific objective as I like to push through server to get control of kitchen. So now we're here. And now I'm going to set up rotates to play in this area of the map. Now in this specific style of roaming, right, we're going to be collapsing back to the site and we're going to just kind of be causing chaos all around. So what I would like to do as a captain is I like to play incredibly aggressive early on into the round, right, getting people's attention. So I'm like, oh look, you know, it's early in the round. I know they're contesting here. Maybe pre-fire that, pre-fire the door. Just do anything to annoy attackers, maybe tag them up and draw attention to me. Try to purposely get spotted by drones, but also, you know, be very careful of surroundings. For instance, there's a window right here that looks directly into this hallway. So not might be not be like the best idea to get spotted out purposely to drag attention. But if you can do it safely, definitely do it safely. Definitely try to annoy the attackers and have attention drawn on you. Like, oh, there's a captain roaming. This will be a free frag. And then have these set up kind of like Home Alone style, where when they're chasing you, they're taking damage, right? So they're trying to immediately get that kill. Boom. You know, they push you. That's free 40 damage here. Free 40 damage there. Free 40 damage here. And then you can fall back 
and then you can play this, and there's one there. So if they're not shooting those and they're not being diligent, uh, very, very free frags to be had and just free damage inflicted without even shooting them once. So now you have them, now you've just done damage, and they're pushing you out, right? You, you've set up your rotates, so you kind of can do whatever now. So now I can rotate all the way back through here, avoiding that white window in this hallway, which they'll likely be setting up a cutoff to. And now I can go pressure garage, pressure front door, and then kind of like just pressure around. But obviously, you know, make sure when you're when you're able to, if you're safe, hop on cams, help your teammates out with calls. And this is kind of how I would do what I would do as a captain, uh, trying to you know, make many ways back to the site. However, any way that an attack would have to push, they get damaged through. So for instance, if they know I'm gonna be playing here in security or server, whatever you wanna call it, they're gonna have to push through and they're gonna have to take that damage. And just like that, I'm safe on site and now I can anchor and I can collapse back. That's how I play captain. It's collapsing and roaming. Best way to do it in my opinion. With that being said, guys, it has been Vexion. It has been real. Peace.